And now it's time for What's Hot. We talk about stories that have us all talking. And we're joined today by Tracy Johnson from Commercial Association of Realtors, plus Jeff Wagner back with us. A Texas mother says she was mistakenly pulled over and handcuffed by police at gunpoint with her four children in the car. Police say they were responding to a report about a driver waving a gun out of a window. They thought the woman's car was the one they were looking for. Should police have handled this situation? differently. Well, yeah. I mean, look, I, I think it's become fashionable lately to sort of pile on to police officers, especially when you don't know all the details. But but here's what happens here. A, they get a 911 call saying there's four black males driving down the road in a beige Toyota waving guns out the window. Okay. This woman is driving a burgundy red Nissan, right? You know, I mean, it doesn't look anything Way at all the like the report. And, okay, you know, you, I mean, I understand you make a stop and you get a stop, you get a report that there's somebody with guns. You, you want to be, you know, proactive and protective. But, okay, once this woman gets out of the car, it's a woman. Okay, the report was, you know, tan, four guys in a tan Toyota. This is a woman in a red car. Give me a break. And their kids in the car. Yeah. yeah. It, and and uh, watching this video as a mother, I, it was very difficult to watch. In fact, I was explaining it to someone and it was hard to explain. This woman just didn't know what she did. She cooperated. Everyone put their hands out of the car when the police asked them. They were they were very gentle in, in, in taking her in. She was very cooperative. And the poor little boy, the six-year-old boy, got out of the car at one point with his hands in the air. It was a heartbreaking thing to watch. What I really appreciated, though, is that everyone was calm right. and they cooperated and the police realized very quickly that they had made a mistake and they tried to recover for it now these kids when they approached the car were crying and screaming they were scared but you know everybody kept their calm and that's what needs to happen more you, you're right but I think it's interesting that the police aren't apologizing and, and they're saying okay when you make a stop in situations like this this is what you do and I, I don't disagree with that I mean if you got a call and you believe that there's people with guns yeah you want somebody show me your hands and do all that I can't get over the first part, though, that to me there was absolutely no basis to pull these, this car over in the first right, it place. It wasn't weaving. Yeah. They didn't see a gun. It didn't match right. the car's description. At all. And right. then you see it's a woman it, and four kids. you got to move on. Right. Well, and just to, to play the other side, I mean, it was late at night. It was dark. They were following a car off of an exit ramp. I mean, and they were trying to put this together. They realized really quickly they made a decision. And Tracy. Burgundy Nissan. I don't no. know. I mean, Beige those, those Toyota. Kids are, those kids are going to be <laughs> scarred. I mean, yeah, it's going to take some undoing the, for the, the kids. The sad part is that there were kids involved. But uh, that's all we have time for with that one. But coming up next, we're revealing the viewer's choice topic of the day. And Brian Goddard back with another look at your forecast. Okay. Again, we're joined by Tracy Johnson and Jeff Wagner of 620 WTMJ. Today's viewer choice topic, the American Academy of Pediatrics now recommends middle and high schools delay their start times. Sleep experts say teens who do do not get enough sleep may be setting themselves up for increased rates of car accidents, poor grades, even depression. So the question is, should schools start later? What do you guys think? I don't remember what time I started. I remember it was being early. early. It's yeah. early, like 7.30. Yeah. So guess what? Go to bed earlier. Yeah. How hard is that? Go to bed earlier. Mama we bear cracking the whip. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, you're exactly right. First of all, it's, it's, it's a zero-sum game. If you start school, I mean, one of the stories, some middle school was looking at starting at 9 o'clock. Okay, if you start at 9 o'clock, that means the kids are probably going to be in school till 4 or 4.30. So, I mean, what does that do, especially in high school, if you do that? Sure, I, everybody would like to start later. Nobody likes getting up real early in the morning. But the truth is, that gets you prepared for this thing we call real life. <laughs> and if high school doesn't let out till 3, 3.34, where does that leave time for the extracurricular activities? Right, because the then you still have stuff? homework. It backs or, everything up. Or if you up. want to work practice. after school, yeah. Or I, in bus schedules and logistics. I mean, this is a nightmare. The other thing to consider is what about parents who have to get these kids ready for school and what does it do to their work schedules? Yeah. I just think I think this is a uh, very reactionary and parents need to just get their I kids know to that, better. Um, Shorewood just looked at this. They have a, like a right. 7.35 a.m. start time for the high school and I, I know that that was some, a topic of discussion. Right. 
Now, I think there, so I mean, the, I mean, their districts are looking at it. Yeah, now, I, I think, you know, you, you can make an argument that for some of the, especially for the middle school kids and the elementary school kids, if the school start is so early that kids are out in the middle of winter at a bus stop at 6.30 or 6.40 in the morning, maybe you push it back a little. But I this think, idea yeah. of 8.45 or 9. For the no. kids that are bused, that gets awfully brutal. Um, yeah. But if you're just walking two blocks or mom and dad is dropping you off, it's not that big of a deal. Mm -hmm. All right, time for our lightning round. The 66th annual Emmy Awards kicking off in just a few hours. Late night Seth Meyers hosting the award show tonight, and there will be a special tribute to the late Robin Williams as well. What are you looking forward to in tonight's show? I, and I, I like Seth Meyers. He's growing on me. So I always enjoy the monologue. I was really excited to see House of Cards on there for a ton of nominations. Um, and Orange is the New Black. Well, you got you a don't dark. like that, or you I made like a face? it. Okay. Well, you got a you got a dark side to you, Tracy Johnson. <laughs> it's, I, I, I tell you, I'm I'm kind of excited. This is going to be the victory lap for um, I think one of the best TV shows ever, which is Breaking Bad. And I look for that to. Uh, I mean, of course, it ended earlier this year. I look for that to win the best uh, best show. Brian Cranston, Aaron Paul, they're going to win. So I'm I'm looking forward to this. Uh, Breaking Bad, it's a victory lap. And I think the Billy Crystal tribute to Robin oh, Williams that's, is going to be, gonna be gonna, really special. That's going to be emotional. And the dresses. If it's any, if the outfits are anything like what was at the uh, Video Music Awards yesterday, guys, tune in for the dresses. It will be a topic of <laughs> conversation. Listen to Jeff Wagner. We've got our red carpet starting at 6:30 tonight, is that uh, it? Jeff. So get the popcorn. <laughs> and for everyone else, Jeff Wagner is not our fashion consultant. <laughs> oh, but I, they He's should focused. be asking me. You should be asking me. You I might do have some insight. Worst insights. and best dress with Jeff Wagner. All right. Well, the what, what's hot discussion continues online. Find that page at tmj4.com/hot.